a little bit of snow in the air this morning and uh, this time around I've switched the, the wide angle lens landscape photography uh, to the telephoto to try to do a little bit of uh, uh, bird photography and I hope that in the new year I'm going to mix it up a bit and try to do a little bit more uh, wildlife photography and uh, I couldn't have got off to a better start because I'm waiting for the whooper swans at the very far end of the marsh here the field um, to take off so every evening they come in and they roost uh, in the fields in the flooded fields here I can hear them now no they're not taken off yet so I think we have a few more minutes for me to chat away but every morning uh, they take off and go out to the fields and feed on the grass and then they come in in the evening these swans really um, do it for me uh, they're magical birds they migrate here uh, from Iceland uh, every winter and um, many years ago um, when I was in my late teens and early 20s uh, I spent a couple of years uh, uh, studying whooper swans and drawing the bills because the pattern on each whooper swan bill is unique so this morning what I'm trying to do is uh, I, I know they fly out of here every morning uh, I wasn't sure of the direction but a number have flown out this morning with the grey lag geese um, and I'm about half an hour standing here just waiting for that flight to get a, just a couple of images of them flying towards the camera and, and again focus is, 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 is absolutely critical so you only have a few moments you need to get the focus on the, on the head um, as, the, as the swan flies uh, towards me now only about five minutes ago when I thought the swans were uh, going to take off um, a, an otter um, literally just ran let me just direct uh, the camera here so just here in front of the camera um, an otter ran across the grass there and uh, he was too close really to get a good shot and I've, I'll put one or two images of him up now when he when he got just here uh, he stood up on his uh, hind legs to have a look at me you know and the minute he saw that face there he jumped straight into the water you know so what a magical experience uh, uh, on New Year's Eve to start the day off so very glad I got out of bed uh, this morning now let's just wait for the swans to to move again they seem very settled there now, as you can see all of the Hooper swans are now um, standing up as such so I think they're preparing to take flight and I'm just hoping that they're going to fly in the direction of the camera here and no, there's just a few flaps of the wing but they're definitely uh, warming up and switching on those propellers uh, to get going so um, I hope I hope they'll be going soon and here they are they're all coming together and um, was a good number of them Well it's now mid-January and I've spent many hours and many sunrises over the past two weeks here at the East Coast Nature Reserve uh, uh, trying to get a, a, a better image of those whooper swans. Whooper swans evoke a winter wetland like no other bird. They uh, represent that call of the wild and when you uh, visit a winter wetland and if you're lucky enough to live in an area in Ireland or elsewhere where whooper swans are uh, regular then you know exactly what I'm talking about when you hear that honking call uh, early in the morning on a frosty morning when they take flight um, they really do uh, capture this type of habitat now, over the past two weeks, uh, my approach to photographing the swans has gradually changed. Um, initially, when I took the three images uh, on that New Year's Eve that I've put up on the screen there, one image of whooper swans in flight, a quite a, a close crop. Um, the second image of swans slightly blurred with beautiful light. And that blur really does appeal to me because it gives an impression of both the swans and the landscape and then the third image uh, showed Wicklow Head in the distance so again it's, it's location uh, specific 
And whilst those three images, I was happy enough with them, I felt there was something else uh, to be taken. And on the first two or three visits that I came down, I was using the beautiful Phragmites here behind me. And you'll see um, just the top of the birch woodland in the distance. And to try to use that as a backdrop. But again, there was something lacking in that shot. And I'll put that up here now uh, for you to view. Actually, in this shot, what I've done is I've taken the swans as they fly over the Phragmites and then took a separate image of the Phragmites uh, in focus and blended them in Photoshop afterwards. The next two or three visits, um, I thought that the birch woodland provided a better backdrop. It, my initial images were quite sharp and I wasn't pleased with them. So I started experimenting with a panning technique it's a very simple technique with the camera whereby I would set the exposure uh, to about 1 60th of a second. Auto ISO and F7 or 8. The swans were quite distant. And as the swans fly by, it's just a matter of gently panning the camera and capturing images. The panning technique created images that I was really pleased with. And I'll place one or two of them up here now. Um, it shows this, the background of the birch woodland um, in subdued light, uh, blurred, but you can distinctly make out the birch trunks. Um, the swans themselves are slightly blurred in the wing and sharp enough uh, in the head. And that image really did it for me. And it drew me back down again and again, trying to get similar images using that panning technique. Um, now, I wasn't uh, successful and I haven't got that uh, image that I really want, that I have in my head uh, as yet. On a number of occasions, I had deer on the marsh early in the morning. And obviously, there's the uh, regular duck, there's uh, mallard, teal, shoveler, widgeon, um, a hen harrier um, visited early uh, on one or two mornings. And I'll put those images up here. Um, just to give you a feel for the other bird life that's about here in the East Coast Nature Reserve. So yesterday morning, I took a different approach to photographing the swans. I visited the area where they're actually roosting. And although I'm on a height on the uh, pathway along the coast and looking down on the swans, uh, the intention was to use that panning technique and to try to capture them as they take off, uh, trying to capture that blur uh, in the wings. And I recorded a little uh, vlog uh, yesterday morning, and I'll play that here now the last of the hoopers this morning they're just about to take flight and I have the camera settings 1 60th of a second auto ISO and trying to capture some sharpness in the head and total blur in the wings to capture movement in a still image the light isn't as good as it was earlier this morning um, when the first group uh, took flight Oh, it's picking up now. The light's just fantastic. Now, the question is, are they going to go? I'm going to just take a few still images. Oh, here they are. I think they're thinking about it. I think they're thinking about it. Oh, the light's just fantastic. Oh, they are just stunning. Stunning birds. No, not yet. 
So the images that I captured yesterday morning, and I was also out this morning, and the light was quite good as the swans were taking off, um, are a little bit closer to what I'd like to get um, and, and how I'd like to capture these magical uh, birds. Um, but I'm going to leave the vlog there, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and I'll leave you with a couple of the images from this morning. So thanks very much for watching and I hope you join me next time. Thank you.